And uh, it's uh, interesting now to get to know what politicians think about this crediting scheme under the circumstances we right now have. And I'm uh, really pleased to welcome also Jens Giesecke in, this, uh, in our webinar. Jens Giesecke is a member of the uh, European Parliament. He is a shadow rapporteur on the uh, CO2 standards in the uh, ENDI committee. And uh, I think we are all keen to know uh, what his position is and how he, how he sees the view of the parliament in general on our topic. Please, Mr. Giesecke, uh, the floor is yours. Yes, thank you very much, Dr. Andersen, and thank you for your kind invitation. And first of all, um, now I have the slot of Massimiliano Salini. This just shows that EPP is flexible <laughs> and we are the ones to react immediately. Um, I'm, I'm happy to, to take the floor now. And of course, let me make one preliminary uh, remark. Of course, the situation in, in Ukraine with this invasion, with the war, that changed fundamentally the situation in Europe. Um, of course, we have the ambition in the Fit for 55 package uh, to reduce CO2. Um, but the war in Ukraine shows that we have to reduce our dependency from all oil, gas, and coal, all fossil um, sources. And so we have to uh, look for solutions. And um, Mr. Zeringer very well explained uh, that there are many advantages of the crediting system. Unfortunately, there was um, no possibility to convince the European Commission uh, to go in such a direction. I just want to remind you, because it is necessary to, to look into the history. Um, we just agreed on the CO2 standards for cars in 2019. And committing that in that legislation, we wanted to have the review in 2023. So we are two years in advance. This is the first, we have to consider this. The new proposal, proposal that we deal with today um, from 2021 uh, goes just in one direction, more ambition, uh, being faster. And the 55% as target for 2030 has now been even increased by my colleague Jan Hötemar, he, who wants to have a 70%, who wants to have additional intermediate targets for 2025 and 2027. And just to be realistic, the, the industry has to implement, has to adapt, has to deliver on the targets. But we will not end our legislation bef before next year, 2023. It is unrealistic. So then you have two years time for new targets for 2025. Excuse me, this is not a realistic political option. And uh, if we come to the 100% reduction target for 2020, uh, 2035, this is a ban of combustion engine. Um, and of course, there are colleagues, green colleagues like Bas Eichhaut who says, okay, that is not enough, um, even the ban of the combustion engine. But then I would say, okay, what does, does he want? Uh, he wants to ban today uh, our, our individual mobility with combustion engine. That's not a realistic approach. This is why EPP, um, and I'm the shadow, rightly, you mentioned Mr. Andersen in Envy. Uh, we propose to have a real review in 2028 to see how the electric success story evolves. If it's really realistic to have this 1.5 million additional electric cars in Germany, for example, and this is just one, one part of the story, you know that we have AFIO as well, the infrastructure. And to be honest, uh, we have 70% of the loading infrastructure for electric cars in just three member states in Netherlands, Germany, and France. And we need to have a European success story. So it goes hand in hand. Mr. Zeringer is quite right to demonstrate the link between red and CO2, but we have to consider AFIO as well. So um, as EPP, we are convinced uh, from the crediting system, and, and I listened very well to Mr. Zeringer, it is speed, it is lack of alternatives. The low carbon fuels, they deliver and the e-fuels will deliver on, on really reducing CO2 emissions. Acceptancy is key and the life cycle is the first, first step in direction of life cycle. But the last point he mentioned is, is very important, vulnerability. We sh in this situation of war, we see we have to reduce our dependency from Russian sources. And so we have something we could produce ourselves. So we have... A so this is really uh, quite convincing. 
Um, just uh, for your information, you know very well, but we have to discuss this. Um, of course, there is a link between CO2 and red. Um, in, 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 in the red ambition, we go even beyond the commission proposal. We go now in the direction of 45% renewables and the sub-targets um, uh, for alternative fuels are up from 13 to 20%. So there is, of course, a question in the political discussion, will there be enough additional fuel in order to have a crediting system alive? That is not just theoretically, but that we really can, can have this crediting system um, in place. So uh, the good message from, from EPP is um, you convinced me with the crediting system. I convinced uh, Pascal Arimont in ITRE, who is in line, and uh, Massimiliano, Solani, Sili, Sa, Massimiliano Salini. It's not so easy to pronounce. Uh, he is on board as well um, from transport. So we are pretty much unified um, in that regard. Um, now we look for allies. You know very well that it's on majorities. and. Uh, of course, that's that's true. I will not have all 177 members of EPP on board, but a, a very a very big part, and we are pretty much united. And in three different committees, we have the same uh, direction uh, to go. Um, on in contrast, I, I just have to recognize that Jan Hötema um, even has um, people in ITRE with Rike going in other direction, not backing the 100% reduction in 2035, going to 90 or 95%, and even ha having sympathy for the crediting system. So my political plea is just, um, I need more support for this uh, position that we took as EPP from left and from uh, from Greens. It's not possible, but perhaps some socialists are willing to, to support. That was my message. Even lefts have favor those options in order not to have a ban of combustion engine and to, to back the, the crediting system. So uh, if, we, if we talk about majorities, it will be difficult to organize majorities in the lead committee in Envy, but the final... Uh, it will not. It's, it, I don't like war terminology in these days. So the final decision will take place in the parliament. That will be in June, and so we need to have majorities for those positions. But I'm pretty optimistic that this is realistic, and I count on your support. Thank you very much, and have a good afternoon.